subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, my students and lovely viewers of SHSR on Joy Learning. I'm here again today as your biology teacher and facilitator to take you through another exciting topic from SHS 1 on microscope. We divide this microscope into two parts. Microscope 1 is what we'll do today. Then the next time we meet to do microscope 2. It's a nice exciting thing. And every biologist Every biologist has to master microscopy. Most things you can't see. You can see my whole body, but you can't see what... If I give you one hair, it's black. But to see what's inside our hair, wow. Small. So our job today is that at the end of our lesson today, you, the students, should be able to identify the various parts of simple light and compound light microscope. Just the parts. And know how to handle and care for the microscope. Why? Because it's expensive. Parts are sometimes... <laughs> can't just think about it. It's not a common equipment you just stand up and buy and put in your house. It's expensive. So you need to handle it with care. So let's start. Imagine something is the size of your, you know, your ruler. There is this small, small lines. You see on your 30 centimeter ruler, you see bigger lines. Or, or your graph book, the smallest lines between two parts. It's a one millimeter apart. Then your cell, your cell in your body. It's about that's that's one millimeter apart. We divided it again to thousand. So millimeter, a ruler that is one long, very long is hundred centimeters make one meter. Then ten millimeters make one centimeter. Then just that one millimeter gap on a ruler, we divide it backwards down. That your eyes if you can see that small space, we are dividing into thousand. Wow. At that stage, that thousand relationship to the meter is going to be a one million, a micrometer. Ten is the past six. I hope you are getting it. This is how small our cells, this is your body that you have, made of billions of cells. One small cell. Usually, it's in the micrometer range. Very small. So, even the small thing on your ruler, you can't see. Then, deep down, it, you are going to see something. So, if I have 1,000, then I can count 100. Imagine that small thing. I'm dividing 1,000, having 100 of it. Call it, maybe, 100 microns. How can you see this? Scientists need to find a way to see them. Now imagine I have this thousand that I've divided off a millimeter. And I can take one distance between them, divide thousand again of the thousand I spoke of. Which first your eye can see thousand again in the nanometer range. Getting to the vi virus group. How can you view such smaller things? So I'm just telling you how small things are. If your ruler is too small to see things. How smaller things are that you can't see, but we need to help to see it. Now, in view of the scientists made an instrument for viewing very small objects that are too small for the naked eye to see, from the explanation we just gave. A ruler, thousand down, thousand down, thousand down. That equipment or instrument they made is what we call the microscope. So we say their job 
is to view. So for me to view something small, then they have to take it from that small stage and make it bigger. And that is called mag that is said to be magnifying the small object. And we call the science of investigating that small things or tiny things our eyes can see with the help of microscope is termed the microscopy. There are types of microscope. We divide them into two main groups depending on the source of illumination that passes through that tiny thing for us to see them. The first one uses light. Only the source of what illuminates things for us is light. So we call it a light microscope. The others which you will see in part two is the electronic microscope or electron microscope. They use electrons that you've studied in chemistry, a beam of electrons to pass through the specimen, make it bigger, bigger, so that we can see them. Each of them have its good and bad side and limitations. We will only today look at the light microscope to a point. We say a light microscope is a type of microscope which uses a visible light and a system of lenses. Lenses, yes, lenses like, you know, lenses, concave, convex lenses that you know in physics. Put it together to transmit and magnify images of smaller objects and make it bigger. But they have a limit. Light has a limit. So the day we are trying to explain why micro, uh, electron came, we explain the limitation. Is that they can only magnify things sometimes and books thousand five times the size or two thousand times the size. So what do I mean? If I say a mic micrometer, micron, which is we write it this way, write a micron this way, which I said you take your ruler, the smallest lines divided thousand backwards, deep into the ruler thousand. And now we are going to take the 1,000 back to a millimeter and increase it to about 2,000. So we are going to increase it like 2,000 times the size there. At least you can see something. Now there are, types, there are three types of microscope per level. We have the simple microscope. They also use lenses and use light. The compound microscope uses lenses and the light, our favorite one, and the stereoscopic microscope. Yes, our syllabus wants you to know simple microscope, compound microscope, and stereoscopic microscopes. Let's look at simple microscope. And we say it's the use of a lens. Usually, make, most of them usually in the old form had one lens. Or a set of lenses to enlarge objects through an angular form, a, very, a certain position that will make the object stand erect in front of you. That's why we call it simple. The design is also simple. It's not so complex of using two or more lenses. No, usually simple. You've watched films where you see certain old men try to use something small to be reading newspapers or look at diamond and stuff. And they are using magnifying glasses. Some even wear it on their spectacles to look at things. A typical example of magnifying glass is even a hand lens. It can magnify things up to 266 times. It doesn't even reach 500 times the size. So simple microscope in the olden days were used to look at things your eyes mostly could envisage, a but so tiny it can't see it well, but it's mostly to enlarge it. Let me show you some old designs of simple microscopes. So take your time and look at them. The one on your left seems to be a very advanced form of simple microscope. This one looks like the current, the build up to the current one. But these are typical old ones. 
specimen placed here, a simple lens, and you are good to go. A mirror down here, and one lens at the top. This is what our favorite Robert Hooke used. Our favorite Robert Hooke that every science student has to know because he's a one as the father of cells. He tried to bring the idea of cells to us. And this was in 1665, about 400 years ago plus. This is what he used. Now let's look at some of the old simple microscope, how it looked like. A handle, eyepiece. So there's always an eyepiece where you put your eye. So keep now knowing the parts. A draw tube where you can be pulling a little bit. A clip, a stage, an adjustment screw that can lift the stage up or down. A pillar that supports it and a mirror. And we have a base. But watch it. It's only one lens you see the eyepiece lens. Then the joint Join Kof microscope 1750, another form of it, an objective, a stage, and a mirror. What is common in our SHS that is so close to this? Not exactly the same, but so close is the hand lens. The one here, hand lens. It's a kind of lens with a convex lens mounted in a frame. Enlarges images of things that our eyes can already see, but clearer, like your aunt. They are so small. The leg of maybe a cockroach. The antenna of a cockroach. These smaller things we can see, we use the hand lens to look at it. If you've not seen them, Wow, I'm showing you one here. One, it's similar one I have here. As if I brought an exact replica. The metal frame, the rubber, the converse lens. So the frame, the converse lens, and the handle. To view anything as a mic using a hand lens, what we say is that, to so take your time, look at it again, enjoy it, in your GHS, you could tilt this to concentrate light on a source of paper and can burn. But here we are using it to view things. Now watch what happens. If I have, I have something written here, I want to see it. We are saying that to use hand lens, what you are supposed to do is that place the hand lens a distance away from you, from your eyes, and put the thing that I want to view that and bring it to uh, you yourself you need it was small to a point that you see it very bigger clearer and you hold it there you see in microscope we keep the thing on the table and put on the lens and be racking it either up or bringing the barrel down gradually so that there's a movement but here you can't always be doing this so if you're supposed to put it down on a, maybe a white tower then you have to keep moving the hand lens to a point that it is clearer and bigger than what you knew it was the size. This is how we use a hand lens. Stay there, study what you want to study, then put capture in your brain and draw. Usually, some of them have a certain mark here. We do write times 10, times 5, times 8. What it means is that whatever the size you have here, Whatever you are seeing has been increased eight times the size, ten times the size. So if it's your handwriting and you see it bigger, it's telling you the number of times that they have increased it, that you are seeing it bigger with your eyes. So it has been magnified ten times, eight times. Usually the SS one that you see around is the times eight and the times five, times ten. But the other higher versions. Now that you had a look at simple microscope, so let's take a look at the pictures again. Let's look at the joint cough microscope as an old one with just eyepiece, one eyepiece. 
our favorite Robert Hooks method. Some old and a slightly advancing type. And you can see that only one lens. Most we say one or a set of lenses at angular position. But the best is say one lens. At school, you may have seen the one we call the compound microscope. Compound comes the idea just like to differentiate from the simple that there's the use of two or more lenses that are arranged in a way to bring the image of what we can't see with our eyes to reality, magnify them bigger. So to see it bigger, we need two microscope sets or more. Two lenses, sorry, two lenses or more. Two lenses or more arranged in such a way that they magnify the image. They can magnify image from times 100 to 2000. At school level, most time we've been using the times 40 maximum to 400 times the size. Now these two lenses are put at extremes, maybe one here, one there, and separated by something. So before we go on, let's look at the image of a compound microscope on your screen. This, we have one here. This, we are supposed to know the parts of the compound microscope in its functions. So we're going to start with, now look at it from the side and look at what is on your screen. I just remove this, I'm putting it back. So if you've not seen one before, okay, let's go to the part. So the first top part here is the eyepiece. This whole structure here is the barrel. So this barrel is, is separating two lenses. I can remove this lens. So look at the design of these two lenses. So there's objective lens and there's the eyepiece lens at the top. See, there are two different positions. All these three are eyepiece lenses. Sorry. All these three are objective piece lenses and the top here is the eyepiece lens. All these ones here are the objective lenses. Here is the eyepiece lens. Then... There is your limp. These are your adjustments. You see the coarse adjustment, the bigger one, then the small and the fine adjustment. You are seeing your objective lenses. We'll explain all of these. You see what we, here is called the clip, stage clip. This is called the stage. This is called your mirror which I took from the down place here. Then we have a condenser and diaphragm. This place that we keep opening. See, I've opened something here. Then we can keep rotating this to open the size of the diaphragm. Then the condenser at the top here, you can also unscrew and remove the whole thing. Then on the stage is a hole, but the condenser head, which is like a source of glass or plastic that light pass through, has blocked the whole space here. So we call this one the stage hole. 
So if I remove this, you see a hole down there. So now let's take them one after the other. Now there is the eyepiece. It is where you put your eyes. It's called the ocular lens. So the eyepiece lens or the ocular lens. We say the closest lens to your eye. Usually we have some magnification on it times, you can see times 10 on it. Means that whatever the objective lens will bring, it will multiply it that number of times. So if the objective lens can take, multiply what is on the slide 10 times, and also can multiply it, what have you multiplied 10 or modified 10 times, I also multiply 10 times, I'm dealing with a 100 multiplication. Now this side is called the objective lens. For some microscope, it can be 2 to a maximum of 5 at the place closest to where the object is. Usually we put the object on a cover slide Then there's a cover slip, a very small cover slip we put on, which I'll show you later. Now, these ones capture images from the specimen you've placed there. That's the first one that captures the image. Among this arrangement, anytime you have this arrangement, we arrange it such way that there's one with a low mark on it. A low mark on it. So look at the length of these ones. There was a max on it. This particular one, which is shorter with the lowest mark, is called the low power. Among the three at a time, listen to among a three at a time, the one with the highest mark is called the high power. Among the one with the lowest number is the lowest power. So if I have a times four, a times ten, at times 40, then I'm dealing with the times 4 being the lowest, times 40 being the highest. But if I have a 10, 40, and a 100, then the 10 here becomes the lowest, the 100 becomes the highest. That's how we, we refer to them. So we have the higher power objective lens and low power objective lens. Now, where we have these two being put together, you see I can revolve it, turn it around. So we call the rotating or the revolving nose piece because we can rotate it. When you look at a simple microscope, if something was there like that, you need to take your time and remove it one at a time and replace them. So the revolving or rotating nose is where we call the rotating turret that houses the objective lenses about two to five and can be spinned around. As usual, when we check the picture, we saw the place as the barrel, the one that separates the eyepiece from the objective piece. So we can always see it's going down, can rotate it to go down or go up. Now, some will call it the amp or the limp. Like this, you hold it, the amp or the limp. That connects the body tube, that's this barrel, to the base. Now, let's look at adjustment. From the picture we had, we saw two adjustments, coarse adjustment and fine adjustment. The coarse adjustment job is that when I place this thing, the my specimen, Probably this one may be up somewhere. I need to bring it down to get to a point I can see something. Maybe not clear, but I can start seeing an image for me. So the course adjustment is just to bring into focus the image that's on the slide. Like your TV, sometimes it can be rough and you tune it for fine tuning. It is this one that will make 
the images appear sharper. This one just bring it maybe rough a little bit, but the down one is called the fine adjustment. That will be tuned to bring sharp images for you to see things clearer. Now let's get to the stage area. This is the stage area. And the stage consists of the platform itself, the one I'm going to put the slide on. So that is the stage. Where we place the specimen to be viewed. So the specimen will be on this thing with a cover slip, maybe if a water on the specimen, put it on it and put it here. During preparing of specimen, we will go through that. Then I have explained there is a hole here which has been blocked by the condenser. If I remove the condenser, which I need to screw it, you see a hole here. We call it a stage hole or aperture. It's a space or hole in the middle of the stage that allows light source to the viewing object from the illuminator to reach the specimen. Then the stage clip, as usual, if I'm doing this, if I don't do it, it means that if it's there like that, then this my thing can fall, or a mistake I turn and it can fall. So we would always put a clip on it to hold it firmly. For some, apart from the course, which is both, we may have a stage mover or barrel mover, we call the stage height adjustment. It rather will be moving this up and down. Or rather, this one is moving the barrel up and down. There are those that rather it's the stage that moves. And we call it the stage height adjustment. Now let's look at things below the stage here. You've already seen the mirror. You've seen the condenser, which is at the top, and the diaphragm, which when I open it, will be opening the down part. That form. So the condenser's job is to gather all the light that has passed here, which are just penetrated from the mirror, scattered, which has passed through the diaphragm, are concentrated through the condenser, through the stage, through the specimen, through the objective lens, and to the eye for us to see. So the diaphragm actually controls the amount of light I want to pass. If I want a smaller amount of light, I'll just move this. Like the cameras or cameramen would do. They can zoom, they can focus, they can do that. So here too, we can open or close it. In addition, there are those that the condenser and diaphragm is situated, as I say, below and put together. That they've modified in such a way that these two are together, like what we are having here. We call it the iris diaphragm. There used to be an old one that you revolve here, and it's the same. It's a diaphragm at the same time, a condenser, mostly called the iris diaphragm. So we say it's a flat spherical disk with holes of different size to regulate now. So it's somewhere here, when you turn it this way, you don't need to do this before it passes through another thing. It's just a small flat thing like this under. And once there are different holes under it, when you move it this way, to be moving. So we call the iris diaphragm. Now let's look at the base of the microscope. So the frame of the microscope. The frame. This whole thing is the microscope. 
we've seen the barrel, we've seen the eyepiece, we've seen the objective, we see the rotating nose piece, you've seen the course adjustment, you've seen the stage, you've seen the clip, you've seen the stage hole, we've seen the condenser, we've seen the diaphragm, and we've seen the mirror. Let me go back to the illuminator. Now, this is where we get the light source. For this type of the mirror, we need to turn the mirror in such a way to a source of light that will hit and reflect the light up through this side. So mostly there is a curved inward side and a turned up side. So the curved inward, how you may call it, the concave usually is used to hit and reflect. But each other now you turn, make sure it's getting a source of light. Then you turn it well for light to hit onto the mirror and reflect it. So the job of the mirror is to reflect light usually from the sun. It means that if you are using this type, it's difficult to use it when there's no light. So there are other methods, other types, like this type. So if it has battery, so if I put it on, I don't need any source of external light from the sun. So I can put this battery powered lamp here. There are others to it is plugged. You, you can plug it and there is bulb in here. So once I plug it like the way we switch on our light, automatically the light will just pass through the condenser and up. So depending on the type you have at your school. But SS, we mostly tell you to use these ones. Disadvantage is that you can't use it when the source of light is down. So day is about to rain, and the whole, temp or the whole light in the environment goes down. When you struggle to use a mirror-based illuminator. So mostly we call all these the illuminators. The plugged one, these ones are called illuminators. So mostly we have the mirror, the two common ones, the mirror and the low voltage bulbs. Either this or the one we plug are called low voltage bulbs. Then you see there's a switch here. The ones that we plug, I didn't bring a picture. The ones that we plug, you just will switch it on here. So we have the on or off switch in front, like what I have here. The advantage of this is that batteries can run down and you need to replace them. So let's use the original one that is common for all students. So what I'm doing is a bad practice where my fingers are touching them. You see that it would show such images then to affect the reflection of the light. So all of a sudden, you know how to handle the microscope, not to touch them with your bare fingers. Now we're on the base, the frame two. We have the base, the stand, the hinge, the limp, and the hand. Let's look at something on your screen. So this is the base. This is your arm. Some will call it the limp. It goes together. Some books as the limp, some as the stage. Then we have the hinges. I can pull. So depending on how you would want to name it, we have the base, can be called the stand, is the hinge and there's the arm and the limb are interchangeable. So the base supports the microscope and it's where illuminators is located. So technically this down part, the base. Then the stand is the foot, this is the hinge and this is the arm. For this design, the stand, the base and the limb has been put together. The base and the limb has been put together. So on your screen is an 
illustrative diagram or image that has the name and the functions associated with it. When you do something like this, we call illustrative drawing. So if the eyepiece at the top here, you say contain magnifying glasses, you look through body tube, connect the eyepiece to the revolving nose piece. Revolving nose piece holds and turns objective lens in position. High power contains the lens with the most magnification. The stage platform used to support the microscope slide. A diaphragm regulates the amount of light entering the body tube. And you can see on your screen the light source is the one that is powerful. Problem. Allows light to reflect upwards through the diaphragm, the specimen, and the, to the lens. The base provides support for the microscope. Then the stage clip holds the microscope slide in place. Then the lower power among these three, this is 10, this is 4, so this side, which is 10 onto the stage directly through the hole is the lower power. Then we have the arm, we have the fine adjustment, the coarse adjustment, and all of them, eight functions have been stated on the image in front of you. So take some 10 seconds and look at it. So before we go on, we've seen what a simple microscope looks like, mostly one lens, and the commonest we can have in our labs are the magnifying glasses. There's a hand lens. There's a compound because you use two or more lenses separated by a connector, that's the body or the tube. Now our job, which will end the part one, is for us to know how to handle and care for our microscope. At the beginning, I said this small thing here is quite expensive. I cannot just guess, but it's not less than 2,000 now or 3,000, depending on the, how complex and what you want to use it for. Save the compound, which is very huge and very big. So I say huge, uh, the electromicro is huge and very big that has to fit a place like this. You just don't play with such things. So you, the student, your school may have very few, so you need to be careful how to handle it. Whenever you go and take it, make sure we don't have the slide on it. When you pick it, you can't just be holding it this way and be walking around with it. This can fall and break. The top can remove. So we don't play with this thing. So what you do is that before you pick it, most if it's in the box, the mirror may not be there. Maybe it's fixed at a certain place that you have to put it there. So what you do is that once you raise it, one hand holds the arm, one hand holds the down. Then you take it from wherever it is to your table, doing it this way. And I bet you if you do it this way, I give the right to your teacher to beat you. You put it on, before you put it down, you touch the table with the front side, release the down part, and push it comfortably away from the edge. That is the first rule of handling the microscope. Two, traditionally brought sand that was slightly dusty. Uh, we don't do this. You don't use your own hanky to be cleaning this thing. Leave it to your lab technician or your teacher who, when he says dirty, call him. We have a tissue inside, a fluid inside, and he's supposed to, to clean this. Why? Because these hanky have some rough surfaces, not like the smooth thing that was inserted. It's most like what the people with spectacles put on. So once you clean and you get there and try to clean the lenses, this greasy 
stuffy thing will get stuck to it. So don't touch it with your hand, with your fingers, and don't use your hankies to touch them. To, sorry, to clean them. Don't use your hankies to clean these things. Go to your teacher and ask him for the right thing. So it's a position on a flat surface with the limb towards you, not this way. Even when there's a light source, which is the one we plug, not this way. We don't do that. Away from you, this side to you, the lenses away from you. Usually to where the light is coming from. So by logic nature, you can't turn it when the light is coming from this direction. You turn it to a window or something so that you get the light source to hit on the mirror. As I said, clean the lens by wiping them with lenses or tissue moistened. Then there's a funny thing we saw in marking the end of the wasi. Most students say, do not touch the microscope with your hand. But basically, I need to go and pick this with my hand. Student English, do not touch it with your hand. But how will you bring it to the table? Roughly, what we're saying that do not touch the lenses with your fingers this way. Once you do it, our hands have picked grease and dirt. You see some circle marks, and if you are not a trained eye, you know that what you are looking at has been interfered with your fingers. Left the grease mark there. Same, you don't touch here. And as I started, I told you, trying to teach you, I was touching this side. I'm supposed to clean all these things. Don't touch them with your fingers. Don't touch them lenses and the mirrors with your fingers because it will leave marks on them. So be careful with the English you, you Then don't say, you say carry them with both hands. One below, one at the limp. So on your screen, you've seen them. Never touch it with the fingers or use coarse cloth for cleaning. The lens should never be wet. We are saying this because you're not supposed to soak something to clean these dusty things here. You're just supposed to use what your teacher will give you, the specific cleaning cloth to clean them. Sometimes you may see us do the wrong thing because the cloth may not be there. So they may look for a substitute. Usually we don't also want fluffy products like cotton products around them. So if you look at that particular material that those who wear spectacles used to clean, it's not mostly cotton base. Then there's a liquid in to clean these parts. And every day should be clean before you put it back. Make sure this container is not so not dirty. We put it back always. To not get this place becoming quinky and stuff and difficult to be turned up and down. Then do not tilt, as I did, do not tilt it when you are using it. Assuming this one is weak. Do not tilt it. Because when I put the hand, the let me take one cover slip. This is a cover slip. This tiny thing I'm going to show to you. I wonder if even you can see it or this tiny thing. It's a cover slip. I'm supposed to put it on top of a specimen. And prior to that, I'm supposed to put water on it or fluid. It's a wet mount. So once I put it on the water seems to grip this thing to the surface. The water is fluid. So when I tilt it this way, what will happen? The fluid will drip. Don't tilt it. If it's an organism that you're not going to use water and is, let's say, dry, if you tilt it, it will fall. We don't do that. It also shake or sometimes dislodge the position of what you are looking at from the center. So don't tilt it. Now again, whenever you 
assuming you put water and the water drips immediately you are supposed to use tissue to clean around the stage so that you don't get wet wax on your stage now to avoid breaking the practice we said to avoid breaking the lens immediately i'm going to put your lenses for the your slide for the first time here always make sure it's up you've tuned it look at the longest side here maybe it's this way turn it to the lowest power which will mostly be the shorter one let it be up Put whatever I want to put there. Hold it with this clip. But if you don't close one eye, it will reduce the strength of this one. So if you are not good, open one eye within your palm. And bring this one down slowly. As you do to be checking how far it's going down. So that it does not touch it. For three reasons. If it touch it, as you mean I use the longest side here to touch it rule one if there's fluid it would wet the objective lens so it mad your work two by bringing it down not at the side you force again you hear a noise it means that you've broken our slide so even if i'm here i'm up here and i think i've seen something closer and i want to see it very detailed now, to the high, I need to go back up. And to turn to the high, when we get there, I need to adjust the light source before I can turn this to the high power. I'm supposed to be looking at the side so that it doesn't touch it because it will break and wet the slide. Now that you've seen that, before removing something, do not practice this method. Assuming it's so close, watch what is going to happen. In the rush of taking it, I may mistakenly do this and break the lens. I break the slide. Watch it. So mistakenly, I break it. Doing this mistakenly under this nature, I may let the cover slip fall or fluid pour here. So what do I do? Before even I take the clip, don't be leaving a clip this way. Just gently put it on. So what do you do? You bring it up. Turn to low power if possible. Remove your clips. Remove your slide slowly. Pull back your clips. And you are safe to go. This thing that we are just dealing with has been asked in the May, June, and of deck WASI for them to test if to them one go to the lab, two you observe how the teacher handles or have been instructed to handle it. So these are basic things you keep. You need to be doing it every time so that you just have a natural way of handling them. So we've seen all that you need in part one to handle the microscope. The part two, look at how to set it up. Look at images and how to measure the size of that tiny thing that your eye can see. That will be magnified into a bigger form. How to calculate it and do resolution. So I hope today you've not seen this before. For once, I've made you see a cover slip, a slide, there's a cover slip, very tiny. A slide, I brought the lab to you here. You've seen a hand lens, you've seen eyepieces and all other things. As I said, follow instructions because our equipment are quite expensive and you one student cannot destroy our equipment so you can also say go and buy it but you may not have the money to buy it
The common one we destroyed is this one, which is very also important to every work that is wet, you are supposed to cover it. You mostly break, they just fall and to break, and you keep quiet without telling us. So in the lab, always follow instructions. So I believe today we've studied enough about microscope part one, where we have defined what a microscope is. What we said is what an instrument for magnifying tiny things your eyes can see. And I said these tiny things are your ruler. Take the smallest millimeter, divide it thousand downwards. And that is how big some of our cells are. Then you can divide it, that thousand you've taken, take another one small gap of the micrometer. When you divide down, it becomes a micro. D take one, divide down again, that becomes a nanometer. And imagine if you can see nanometer. And these things are in our body. Virus affecting you are in nanometer. So we need to have a powerful machine that will move it from that down million backwards forward. So we saw types of microscopes being light and electronic based on the source of their illuminators. Then we looked at types of light microscopes. That is simple, Robert Hooke's own compound. And we didn't look at stereoscopic. Once we are done, we'll look at stereoscopic. Then we look at all the parts of the microscope if you look at all the parts of the microscope and their functions. So I hope today you can answer questions on microscope, can handle it, take care of it for us, make use of it, and please always practice with it. Do not be afraid to touch it, but ask permission first. So I'll leave you with some questions for you to try. Which has also been some of our past questions. Define the microscope and its function. Mention the types of microscopes. State four parts and its functions of the light compound microscope. It's been a nice time coming your way to share with you on the topic microscope. Note it's just part one. We come to part two and part three of the microscope. If you have any questions or later, send it to us and when we come, we'll share finances to this. To we meet again, as being your facilitator or something I'm watching, taking you through microscope one of SHS one on SHS. TV on Joy Land. To we meet again, bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.